Dear learners, in this session we are going to deal with retail trade. Suppose if you want to buy on a same day dress materials, some books and some spices. You have to go to different shops in the market. Then it is a time consuming process and you will get tired after shopping. There we have retail businesses which is running on a large scale which is coming to your help and in this session we can learn about that. You will learn meaning of retail trade, different types of retail trade and different types of large scale retail trade. Small shopkeepers who sell goods directly to the consumers are called retailers. Retailer is directly connecting the consumer and so he is the last link in the chain of intermediary. Retailer is an intermediary between the wholesaler and the consumer. Manufacturers will sell goods to the wholesaler and wholesaler will give the goods to the retailer and retailer will keep in touch with the consumer. So in between whom and whom is the retailer? Retailer is an intermediary between the wholesaler and the consumer. We have different types of retail trade including small scale retail trade and large scale retail trade. In small scale retail trade, limited variety of products will be there in limited quantity and for starting small scale retail trade, limited capital is required. As there is less variety and less quantity, limited customers will enter the small scale retail trade business as customers. Then large scale retail trade, large variety of goods will be there in large quantity, but its operation requires large capital. It can attract large customers. We have under small scale retail trade, itinerant retailing and Fixed shop retailing, ice cream sellers, fruit sellers, in cart, etc. are itinerant retailers. Those retailers who have shop in a fixed place can be included under fixed shop retailing. Itinerant retailers move around and sell a variety of items directly to the consumers. They do not have a fixed shop. Price is not fixed and mostly settled through bargaining. Items sold are not branded products. You used to buy vegetables near your house. These persons who will come through with the help of vehicles with the wheels, these vegetable sellers are selling you. So they can be included as itinerant retailer. Fixed shop retailing, these shops are located at marketplaces. Sometimes these shops are located at commercial areas or near your residential localities. Under fixed shop retailing, we have three main types, general stores, specialty store and single line store. General store deal with a variety of items of general use. General store sell products mostly required by people for their daily use like biscuits, gift items, stationery, etc. General store make direct sale by cash only. These retailers may give discount to its regular customers. Sometimes these retailers provide delivery of goods at the customer's house free of charge. Under fixed shop retailing, we have single line store which deal with a specific line of goods. Single line store sell goods of different size, brands, designs, styles and quality of the same product line. You must have seen shops selling only books, some shops which is dealing only with the toys, similarly ladies garments, children garments etc. are sold in some single line stores. 
we have specialty store as a fixed shop retailing. Specialty stores deal with products of specific brand or a company. All varieties of any particular brand or manufacturers are made available in these stores. Now coming to large scale retail trade. Large scale retail trade deals in a variety of goods of daily need and makes these goods available to the customers at their convenience. In large scale retail trade, this organization can purchase goods in bulk directly from the manufacturers. Why? They have more money and they can avoid middlemen in the process of purchase. This will reduce the cost of operation of large scale retail business. Large scale retail trade can provide service to a large number of customers. Because large variety of products are there, the size of this store is very large and can accommodate more customers. So, this can be considered as a merit of large scale retail trade. But large scale retail trade requires huge capital to start the business and in order to run the business. Usually, large scale retail trade sells goods on cash basis. Mainly, we have three types of large scale retail trade departmental stores, multiple shops, and super bazaars. Departmental stores are located at the main commercial centers of the cities and towns. This facilitates the customers to get attracted and they can easily come to buy the goods in these departmental stores. According to their convenience, they can come. And departmental stores have large size. In departmental stores, various sections are maintained. That is, various departments are maintained for each category of product. Each department deals with particular type of goods. For example, electronic goods under one department, ready-made garments under another department, food items under another department and so on. Departmental store enjoys centralized management that is, one center will control the whole departmental store or different departments of that departmental store. Facilities like restaurants, restrooms, telephone, ATM, etc. are also made available to the customers inside the departmental store. It is an enjoyable experience for the customers to shop in the departmental store. And everything is possible or every material is available under one roof in the case of departmental store. Free home delivery is possible in departmental stores and sometimes you can buy goods under credit card system. Departmental store offers wide choice of products. It enjoys economies of large scale purchase and sales. Different departments are managed. So in one department, one product of other department can be displayed and there is a possibility of mutual advertisement in the case of departmental store. As there is large resources, management can be done in a perfect manner and convenience of shopping to the customers as an advantage of departmental store. Whatever be the type of organization, it will have certain limits. So here also for departmental store, we have certain limitations like heavy investment, high price, distance from residential areas, high cost of operation and lack of personal attention. So under large scale retail trade, we have studied departmental store, then going to super bazaar. Super bazaar sells a wide variety of products like food items, vegetables, fruits and durable consumer goods all under one roof. But the main objective of a super bazaar is to eliminate the middlemen in the distribution process. Super bazaar sells at reasonable price. Usually, super bazaars are set up as a form of cooperative society. It is centrally located and establish their branches near residential localities. 
some have their mobile van which is taken to the residential areas for sale of goods super bazaars deal in standard quality products only and often run on self service basis super bazaars are managed by elected members of the cooperative society and super bazaars purchase goods in bulk from the manufacturers and sells them to the members and general public at a reasonable margin of profit this is a form which is created as a cooperative society so it is helping its members and it is providing products to the customers by taking only reasonable margin of profit so customers will get the product at a reasonable rate as a feature of super bazaar i would like to say goods are sold on cash basis and capital is provided by the members of cooperative society capital contributed by members of society this is an important feature of super bazaar now it is time for us to study the advantages of super bazaar which includes variety of goods quality goods low price products and low operating cost super bazaar is beneficial to its members members of limited means will form the society and that is run in the form of a super bazaar so it is benefiting its members freedom of selection is there for the customers usually most of the super bazaars are run by the support of the central government or of the state government limitations of super bazaar heavy investment no credit facility lack of efficient management going to the difference between the departmental store and super bazaar departmental stores owned by private individuals super bazaars by the cooperative societies departmental stores provide facilities like restaurant toilets telephone etc no such facilities are available to the customers in the case of super bazaars generally price is higher in the case of departmental store but reasonable price is goods are sold at cheaper rate in the case of super bazaar and goods are sold only on cash basis in the case of super bazaar and in the case of departmental store sometimes goods are sold on credit basis also coming to another form of large scale retailing we have studied general store then super bazaar and coming to multiple shops as a large scale retail trade multiple shops sell similar range of commodities at the same price in all their shops shops are owned and run by big manufacturers multiple shops open a number of branches at different localities in a city or in different cities in a country and this type of shop is now also known as chain stores multiple shops are operating at different places near the customers and same managers are managing this shops which is located at different places so these shops are decorated in the same manner to help the customers to identify such a shop easy recognition is possible in the case of multiple shops multiple shops deal in similar type of goods mostly of everyday use example shoes textiles watches automobile products etc price is uniform in all these shops for the same items even if the shops are located in different cities price is uniform because price is controlled by the head office or fixed by the head office managed and controlled by the head office multiple shops are managed and controlled by the head office and they sell goods on cash basis purchasing done at a central place or production done at a central place then supplied to different branches by the head office itself advantages of multiple shops because it is arranged in a similar manner or it's decorated in a similar manner so easy identification is possible elimination of middlemen is possible large scale operation and its economies of large scale operation is possible low price can be fixed selling on cash basis no bad at public confidence because of the 
high quality products and usually located at convenient places for the customers. Limitation of multiple shops or chain stores. We will not get different brands or same product of which is having different brands. So limited choice as a demerit of multiple shop. Selling is done only on cash basis, no credit facility, lack of initiative and there is no chance of bargaining power because price is fixed by the head office and at this price the product are sold in different retail outlets. So departmental store and multiple shop. What are the differences? Usually departmental stores are located at central places. Multiple shops are located near the customers. Decoration of the departmental store is different and it is decided by the owners. Decoration of the multiple shops are uniform and it is decided by the head office. Departmental stores deal in a variety of goods. Multiple shop deals in a few items of different manufacturers or few items of one manufacturer. Usually price is uniform in the case of multiple shops but price can differ from one store to another in the case of departmental stores. Credit facility is not possible in the case of multiple shops because it will sell only on cash basis. Departmental store provides credit facility to the customers. Then coming to another form of retail business, malls, which is so prominent in the present situation, buildings with many shops and selling different products to the customers are, can be included as a mall. It provides unique shopping experience to the customers. Malls are equipped with the state of art of architecture, comprising spacious shops are there. And malls sell all kind of products of world renowned brands. Outlet as a retail store. Outlet is a store in which manufacturers sell their stock directly to the public. Typically manufacturer branded stores where customers can buy goods at a low price as mediators are eliminated. Outlets provide a feeling of assured quality together with economy in purchase to customer. We have non-store retailing that is without store also we will sell through tele shopping, internet shopping, mail order business and through automatic vending machine. Without the seller you are getting products. Mail order business. Procedure for it is advertisement is placed in the newspaper by the seller. Buyer fills the coupon and send it to the seller. Seller receives orders. Then execution of the order is done by the seller. Seller will send the goods through the post office. Buyer receives the goods and make payment to the postman. Seller collects the money from the post office. This is the procedure of mail order business. Features of mail order business. Entire process in the mail order is carried through the postal department or postal system. Buying and selling takes place without any face-to-face -face contact between the buyer and the seller. Seller advertises the products giving detailed description of the goods, mode of payment, terms of sales etc. in the newspapers, magazines, letters, catalogs etc. Seller receives order from the buyer by post. Seller sends the properly packed goods to the buyer through value payable post. Seller receives payment through post office. No middleman is involved in the process. Goods suitable for mail order business. Lightweight goods. If it is a heavy machine, is it possible to sell it through mail order business? No. So you should consider the suitability of mail order business. Lightweight goods. Durable goods. That is non-perishable goods are sold through this process. And goods with high demand are sold through mail order business. Goods having delivery charges relatively lower than their price are sold through this process. And the goods that are easy to handle are sold through mail order business. Advantages of mail order business. Customers can easily purchase the goods while sitting in their place. 
It saves time and effort of the customers. Anyone can start this business even with small amount. This assures the customers that they can get back their money if they are not satisfied with the product. Usually, it is done on cash basis and it serves a wide market with a large number of customers. Coming to limitations of mail order business, credit facility is not available to the customers and it is not suitable for illiterates. Buyers do not have any option to check the goods before making payment. Place of the buyer should be connected through postal services then only you can do this business and it requires widespread advertising which involves high cost. So dear learners, in this session we have learnt meaning of retail trade, different types of retail trade and different types of large scale retail trade. Hope you understood this session very well. Thank you.